So Shabbat Shalom, everyone. And this morning, the Torah portion is called Tuldot or Generations. And um, again, if you are new to the channel, we are a Messianic congregation. We are based in Mississauga, Ontario. And uh, to learn more about our ministry, you can visit our website at the congregation yeshua.org and also we have a youtube channel our handle is called at congregation yeshua um, so for more uh, information about us and how you can uh, be a part of this, this movement of uh, sharing the truth of yeshua the messiah to the nations so uh, genesis chapter 25 verse 19 to chapter 28 verse 9 if you want to go back and read the Torah portion and uh, to, just a quick summary we will not uh, have time to go through all the uh, the uh, many many insights many many things we can learn but we'll try to cover as much as we can uh, as we know Rebecca and uh, Isaac Isaac marries Rebecca at age 40 and uh for 20 years, uh, Rebecca was barren, and Isaac prays for her, and, 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 and Rebecca, or Rivka, gets pregnant with twins, and Rebecca gets a revelation of the twins, and then uh, the twins are born. Esau despises his birthright and exchanges it for a bowl of soup, and we learn that a second famine occurs, but Isaac stays in Israel and souls. Uh, uh, and yields a hundred blessing. God told, tells him not to leave. We'll also see here that Isaac blesses Jacob instead of Esau. And then we we'll see here that Esau uh, runs for his life, but Isaac reaffirms his blessing of Jacob before he leaves to find a wife. So um, last week, we were introduced with the death of Ishmael. And, uh, and this week, we are, we are going to be introduced with the twin brothers, Esau and Jacob. The general comment uh, from uh, Vil, Vil Nagon, he, he is a uh, 17th or 18th century rabbi. Um, and uh, he said that the relationship of Ishmael and Esau, because Esau, you, we will read later on, married a number of wives, one of them was the daughter of Ishmael. So you will see here that there is a great, there's a connection between Esau and Ishmael. According to the Jewish writing, and we're gonna explore this later on, that there will be four major exiles of the Jewish people before the coming of the Messiah to establish his kingdom here on earth. The first, of course, as we know, is the Babylonian exile, where the first temple was destroyed. And then after the Babylonian exile, who came next was the Persian. The Persian took over the, the, the Babylon. And uh, um, we, saw, we see here the story of Purim. And then later on, the Greek exile, and, and we're going to talk about uh, this month, the, 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 the story of Hanukkah, uh, the, uh, the Greek exile. And finally, they said the longest exile will be the Roman exile. The Roman exile is, uh, and currently we are, the Jewish people are in this Roman exile. And they said the, the fourth one is the longest one. And we're gonna explore that more as we go on to today's um, teaching. So in Genesis chapter 25, verse 19, talks about the generation. These are the generation of Isaac, Abraham's son, and Abraham begot Isaac. So the interesting word here, um, it says here that, um, sorry, before, before I go into that uh, verse, it says here that the, I said the Roman exile will be the longest. And let me go back to that talk because uh, the Vilna, Vilna Gon, he's like I said, an 18th century Torah scholar. He brings the following idea 
as a result of the connection between Esau and Ishmael. He said, according to his writing, he said, there are 70 nations coming out of Noah. The Jewish nation is all, often described as like a lamb in the midst of 70 wolves that want to destroy it. In various ways, the Bilgadon was writing that he said that the 35 nations are descendants of Ishmael and the other 35 are the descendants of Esau. So therefore the primary enemies of the Jewish people will always be Ishmael and Esau. But as a matter of genealogy, what the Bilangon is saying is impossible because we know that Esau and Ishmael both came from Abraham to Shem. And the 70 nations are coming from Ham and Japheth. These are the, 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 the descendants of Noah. As we all know, we all came from Noah. As far as pure genealogy is concerned, the 70 nations um, has to come from Ham and Japheth. So what does the Bilangon mean then? So what the, what the 70 nations mean then, he's speaking of a spiritual um, descendant, speaking 50% coming from Esau and 50% coming from Ishmael. So the Bilangon is actually talking about not a physical genealogy, but he's referring to a spiritual nature of the enemies that will be try that will in the end times try to destroy Israel in the end times. And as I said, we will continue that, that understanding uh, towards our lesson today. And uh, Genesis chapter 25 is uh, the start of our Torah portion. Uh, these are the generations of Isaac, Abraham's son. And then it talks about Abraham begat Isaac. Now the interesting word there is tuldot in Hebrew means generation. And the Hebrew word holid means to cause or to choose. So based on that verse, we see here that there are two types of sons of Abraham. The first one are those that are by nature, which are the DNA Jews, and those that are nurtured, are Jews by choice, meaning by conversion. So both according to God, are acceptable. So we, we can either be Jews by birth or we can be Jews by choice. And today we are, we are Jews by choice. So Abraham begot Isaac. Uh, there's some insights here from an ancient commentary. He said, despite the multitude of proselytes, converts to Abraham's faith, all the children of the wife of Keturah and Ishmael Proof that Ishmael went around seeking converts, meaning bringing souls to the kingdom. So it, the, the, the original plan, and still is the plan of God, and as Sister Ellen is alluding to, the plan of God is to evangelize. He said to, to Abraham, bring the Torah to the nations, bring the light. The gospel is a good news that we can live for God. Amen. We are to be the light of the world. We, you know, the, the, the nation of Israel was, su, 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 was to be the light to the nations. They are supposed to take the truth of God's word to the nation. And, and Abraham, um, who is the first Jew, why was he the first Jew? Like we said uh, many times is he was the one who uh, brought the idea of a one, uh, of a monotheistic one true God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. And he preached and he converted many into, uh, into God's kingdom. He, 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 he was a, a soul winner. So that's why the very fundamental of Judaism, and the very fundamental of our faith goes way back to Abraham, meaning we are here not um, to learn Torah by ourselves, but to share to share it to the nation, to share it to our loved ones, to our friends, our families, so that they too will be instructed in the ways of God. So we are to continue the legacy to bring the light to the nation. As previously mentioned, Isaac was the only one worthy to be the successor of the patriarchs. Like I said, that Abraham had many, many sons, Ishmael, and then the six sons of Keturah. 
why was Isaac was the only one worthy? Remember, Isaac was uh, not, was the son that was ha, um, was the promised son, and he had a physical resemblance like his father, and he was the one that was offered as a living sacrifice. Amen. So that is why. You know, uh, again, um, alluding to the Messiah here, the, the connection to the Messiah. He, he's the one who is in the image of the Father, who was sacrificed in the altar, uh, who, was who was bound by uh, Abraham, who was offered as a sacrifice. So it, uh, surely um, um, you can see the connection between Isaac and Yeshua here, because uh, as we know, uh, even though he did not die in the altar, but he was willing to lay down his life. And Yeshua, he, uh, he was in the image of the Father. He came down on earth and he willingly gave his life as a living sacrifice for us. So we see here that uh, on the next slide, we see here that um, um, interesting that the promised son, Isaac, the one that will carry the lineage, he ends up marrying a, a woman that is barren. Hashem allowed him to, so think about that. Uh, uh, think about that for a second. You know, why will God, from all the many women in, in during Isaac's time, why would God choose a woman that is barren? So, um, so here we see here uh, that Isaac prays to re that Rebecca gets pregnant and Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren and the Lord let himself be entreated to of him and Rebecca his wife conceived. So here we see here that when it comes to the prayer Isaac and Rebecca have been praying Rebecca a super godly woman Hashem has chosen her to be the wife of, of the son that was bound the living sacrifice to be his wife. Isaac the one who willingly offered his life at Mount Moriah. So the, uh, the, in the Jewish writing, it says there that um, Isaac took Rivka to the Mount Moriah, and there she prayed for her. Um, Isaac took his wife there, and there she received her womb. The Hebrew word for womb is rakem. The root word is rakamim, which means the word for mercy and compassion. So when, when we have compassion and mercy on people, what we are expressing towards them is we're giving them a womb. And what is a womb? The womb carries a child. It's a place of safety. It's a place of provision. It's a place of comfort. And the, so the child, when, when, uh, when uh, she, he or she is in the womb, they are protected. So it goes back to the place of the Atonement. So, so here, um, Isaac went back to the place where he he laid down his life. So, the concept of the womb here is connected to the concept of the atonement. Why is that? Because God is saying that in order for the, for the souls, we, we need to have compassion for the soul so that they too can have uh, atonement for themselves. So this, this is where Isaac brought Rebecca at Mount Moriah to, a super, to be supernaturally healed. So the question goes back to why was Reb, 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 uh, Rebecca chosen when she was barren? Why was Sarah barren? And later we learn that Leah and Rachel were all barren goes back to the central idea that the nation of Israel, the Jewish people could only be formed or only be created by, a, by, divine, by the divine intervention of Hashem. So there are various insights in the Torah, by the Torah commentators relating to the miracle of Re, uh, Rebecca. One is it demonstrates the power of God and how the nation was, of Israel was formed by God not by the power of man, but by his spirit, says the Lord. So that's the first um, insight. The second one is God had a strong desire to hear the prayers of his saints since 
he publicly uh, he publicized uh, through his word to, to for us to 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 learn from the power of his prayer. When we pray, when we intercede in behalf of of someone, God intercedes. God intervenes. So God wants to. That's why we do the community prayer. Why? Because we want to to declare. And we want to, to be a witness that God answers prayer. Amen? And the third is God gives, uh, thereby God gives his beloved people a cause to praise so he, can, so, so he can fulfill their requests. He gives us a reason to pray. You know, when, when trials and tribulation comes, it's when uh, we remember God most, right? When we are in the up and up when when we are successful when we have we um, you know we we um, we are on top of the world sometimes we often forget god that's why the jewish people when uh, when they are full they pray after they eat it's not they don't they, they don't normally pray before they eat they eat after why because it is when in 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 your height in your when you are satisfied when you are um, when you are content is when often we forget about God and God is saying, you know, uh, some, and, and, and sometimes when trials come is, uh, God is allowing it. Why? Because we have forgotten him and God is saying, okay, come on. Uh, you're in trouble. I know you need help. You can come to me. And God is, is, uh, looking to us. That's why he says, give, you know, it, 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 we don't pray uh, only when uh, when we're, we're in trouble. We don't pray only during the week or during or once a week or once a month or once a year. We pray every day. Why? What did Yeshua teach us? Give us this day our daily bread. Amen. So finally, everything in our life, our walk with Hashem, is in his perfect timing. If we walk with God, if we if we were walking in his will, obeying his commandments in our lives, and and uh, you know, uh, yeah, of course, we're not going to live a perfect life, but we are daily, daily trying, right? If we're walking in his ways, God has a perfect timing for us. And sometimes we we wonder, say, why 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 is it happening to me? Why why not? You know, why is God not giving this to me? I, I need this. I need this. It's all in God's perfect timing. And in the case of um, Isaac and Rebecca, they had to wait 20 years before the children were born. Why? Again, it's all based on God's perfect timing. Amen. So uh, uh, during the pregnancy, Rebecca had a revelation that there will be twins. The pregnancy is very difficult. You see, you, you see Rebecca is a type of person that gets easily discouraged. We see that uh, in, uh, in her pregnancy that she said it's not worth living if she's going through this difficulty. And then we'll see later on when uh, uh, she sees Esau marrying two Hittite women, Canaanite women. And then he said, if J Jacob is to marry one of these women, it is not worth living for her. So she's very, very easily discouraged. But God encourages her. He says, um, you will deliver twins in your womb. The first one, uh, so as uh, um, Pastor June read, there will be twins. Rebecca, she, will, she was struggling with her. He said, um, so he inquired to the Lord. And the Lord said to her, there will be two nations in your womb, two matter of people. Um, and Esau, according to the rabbinic thought, represents Rome, which is eventually represents the Western civilization, the root of uh, um, uh, replacement theology, of course. Esau is known to, tr to try to impress his father. And as a result, both children kept the commandments. Only after Isaac died did Esau stop keeping the commandments. So it's interesting because uh, Isaac represents the Mashiach. Interesting that Esau and his descendants represents Rome, Western world. After the savior uh, represented by Isaac dies, 
What do we learn? They stop uh, keeping the commandments, isn't it? But it's not. But that's not the plan or the heart of God. The heart of God was to be like Jacob to continue on the mitzvah, the commandments. So we're seeing here a pattern. The ungodly pattern is, uh, is, is the when the image of the father, which is Isaac, the atonement. When he died, we stopped doing the mitzvah. That is Esau. But Jacob always kept the commandments even after the death of the son that was offered as an atonement. So we see here in Revelation chapter 12, the true saints are who? Who are the true saints? Those that obey the commandments of God and has the testimony of Yeshua. So we learn here that uh, Esau in Genesis chapter 25, the boys grew up. Esau was a cun cunning hunter a man of the field, and Jacob was a quiet, or in Hebrew where the Tob was a quiet man dwelling in, twent, uh, in tents. So there's uh, insight here. Esau, as we know, is uh, a hunter. Isaac loved him because he was looking for a seed that will be strong and that will be able to defend the kingdom. So he saw Esau as the one that will carry the legacy. So the, the Hebrew word there, the man of the field means Esau was worldly, worldly. Jacob in, he, in the Hebrew says he's a plain man. In Hebrew, the word is Tom, which is normally uh, associated with uprightness and uh, without blemish. And, uh, and the, the dwelling in two tents is a, um, is a uh, allusion to the study of Torah. So you study uh, in the tents. Uh, so uh, so um, so you, um, as you said, um, Jacob was a wholesome man abiding in tents, and um, it doesn't mean someone that is uh, not manly to abide in tents. Means he was studying Torah. His priority in life was to study the Word of God. Jacob had a great grasp. He had a he he had a, a touch. Um, he had a torch to bear, that his grandfather was Abraham, and his father Isaac, which is the image of the son that was sacrificed. The, the image of the father laid as a sacrifice. So for for Jacob, he was looking at the spiritual legacy. He was looking at the spiritual legacy. Isaac, on the other hand, saw Esau uh, for his potential to, to be, you know, the carrier of the defender of the faith, right? Because he was strong. He perceived Esau as, as uh, the one that will, be, 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 that, will, uh, that will carry on the torch. But as we know, Rebecca had a revelation from God that whoever comes first, will serve the younger. So he didn't know which one was the chosen one until the children came out. So uh, in Genesis, uh, let me go to the next slide. So Genesis chapter 25, we see here that when Esau was exhausted, what did he do? He, he said that he, he, uh, he came to, uh, from hunting and he was, he was hungry. Why was he exhausted and tired? Why was he, what, this is what he said? I don't care about my birthright, for he felt so tired that he is about to die or or live another day. The question was why was Jacob making a pot of lentil soup that day anyway? The answer is it is the day that his grandfather Abraham died. So it is the funeral day for Abraham, and instead of being in the funeral honoring Abraham, Esau went on to hunt. So meanwhile, Abraham, his grandfather, was having a funeral. He comes and Jacob is making the consolation meal for his father and mother, Isaac and Rebekah. That's what Jacob had a birthright in front of him in his mind because his grandfather just passed away. The blessing has just passed over from Abraham to Isaac. And Isaac is not really that young anymore. So he's thinking, okay, Abraham is dead. Isaac is now uh, the next in line. Now, who will who will the blessing be 
be passed on. So Jacob realized the blessing at some point will be conveyed again to the firstborn. So Jacob was not so much concerned about the material blessing, but more, more on the mission, to continue the mission. So let the spiritual blessing that comes from the Torah, uh, from the Torah, uh, from, from, from the blessing of the firstborn, come to me. So that's why he was interested in the blessing of the, uh, of the firstborn. So being chosen doesn't mean to be placed in a pedestal. Being chosen means you've been, part, you've been given a part to be the light to the nation. That's why uh, part of what we, what we should do is, is to, um, to be the, the light to the nations. Yeshua said to his disciples, I have chosen you so you can be fishers of men. This teaches them, uh, uh, teaches them on, on, he taught them in the pace of Seder, I, I wash your feet because I need to demonstrate to you the type of service you need to perform for mankind. You are in the world, uh, the nations are your servants, you, uh, and you are not their master. So Esau here disdain, or he, he didn't like his birthright. He, he, uh, he's more interested in the material blessing that came. Um, and uh, so that's why uh, he despised his birthright. He said there, Esau is symbolically represents the kind of strict materialism that simply glorifies the accomplishment of man and simply try to put God out of the equation. Thus, in the beginning of the partial, remember Esau went, when he came back from, from the field hunting, he was very exhausted, very hungry, and Jacob was making lentil soup. Esau, what did Esau do? Gave him, um, um, he said, can you, I will uh, sell me a birthright. So he sells the birthright in exchange. He, he's, what he's doing is he, I, he, he's, he's exchanging the divine service. You know, it is uh, interesting that uh, in the Catholic tradition, that the, the oldest son in, in the Irish family, the oldest son needs to become a priest. The second son is a fireman and the third son a policeman. So where did, that, where did the Irish Catholic get that idea? Well, they got it from the Torah. Because remember that in the Torah, every firstborn male is to be consecrated, consecrated, set aside as a priest. Of course, that later changed because of the sin of the golden calf. And the priesthood was temporarily reassigned to the tribe of Levi. So what did Esau's words say? Behold, I'm going to die. Why do I need my birthright? Um, I can see some uh, people beeping. You can still hear it, right? You can still hear me? Yes, everything good. So Esau was saying, what uses, what, what is, what is um, the, 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 the need for my birthright? Um, behold, I'm going to die. Why do I need my birthright? Simple meaning is when somebody says, I'm starving, I'm going to die. The commentary says, the deep meaning is Esau is like saying, there's no life after that. All that I have is in this world. And in this world, I eat, I drink, and be merry. For tomorrow, we will die. So why do I need spirituality? Why do I need divine service? I want to enjoy my life today. So Esau represents the notion of, uh, of the hedonistic, materialistic approach to life, which focuses, focuses on essentially pleasure. As the religion evolved, um, replacement theology, as we know, is amalgamation of different pagan and Greek and Jewish ideas. And it became more and more like a rubber stamp of Western civilization meaning the religion has become less of an influence, less relevant, meaning it become less of an impact. Talk about uh, many, many leaders today, they say, okay, I'm, I'm this and I'm that, but yet 
the, 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 the legislation and the way they vote, the way they pass laws does not reflect the word of God. Why? Because um, the, the, the Rome influence, the Western influence is really relegating God to the side. So, um, so what is it saying here that Esau therefore represents the notion of getting rid of God either explicitly or by the belief that it is relegated to irrelevancy. So what, what am I saying here? So if you look at uh, um, Western civilization, they, they claim to be um, of this um, religion and yet the laws do not reflect the God that they serve. Are you still here? Ishmael, on the other hand, represents a different tendency, the tendency of taking God and using him for immoral or corrupt purposes. Like saying, if you uh, kill a Jewish person, you will, you will go to heaven and have 20 virgins waiting for you. So it's a... Uh, it's a it's a religious tendency, or we call it uh, uh, fanaticism, where it preaches hate and destruction. So when the Vilna God was saying the thirty five nations come from Esau and the thirty five nations come from Israel, he was making a symbolic point that the external oppression in the last days will be coming from two different directions. It's like being in a rock in a hard place. On one hand, we are facing the Western culture that is but the trial by assimilation, meaning, you know, the, the, the Westerns, uh, the same way in uh, Hanukkah, where they said, you know, I want you to assimilate, forget about the Torah, forget about the word of God. So they're, they're trying to eradicate the word of God to become more and more like them, more and more uh, um, um, reflect the Western lifestyle in which the Bible is relegated to irrelevancy. It, it, uh, as Timothy said, having the form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. So Esau is uh, hedonistic, materialistic, secularism, and Ishmael is, we, is what we call the religious uh, fantasism fanaticism that preaches the ethics of uh, hate. It causes um, um, us to, to live um, uh, or using God as a justification to do evil against our fellow man. So the bill of God here is suggesting in the end time there we will be, we will be buffeted by two different forces. Problem number one is they want us to join them or and problem number two, if you don't join them, you will be destroyed. So um, Esau is, is like Hanukkah, where assimilation was the, 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 the flavor of the day. They didn't want to destroy uh, the Jewish people, but they want them to assimilate. Purim is Ishmael, where it, where it the idea of complete destruction of the Jewish people whether or not you are religious or non-religious, as long as you are a Jewish person, it, they, they want to kill you. So the idea of two spiritual forces before the coming of the Messiah is already happening today. Amen? Um, let me go to the next slide. So, uh, so why is Isaac getting a blessing? So here it's a very important principle here. So remember... Uh, um, the Lord appeared to Abraham, to Isaac. It says there was a famine. In verse one, it says, in verse two, the Lord appeared to him and said, Go down, not down to Egypt, dwell in the land which I will tell you. So, just like Abraham before him, Isaac sees famine. He was planning to go to go, to go to Egypt, but like, Ab like Abraham before him, and Hashem appears to him and says, Isaac, you are not to go to Egypt. Why? Why was Isaac the only patriarch? Uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are the patriarchs. Why is Isaac the only, not allowed to leave the land of Israel? The reason is Isaac is considered a living sacrifice. Just like a sheep 
that, are, that is about to be offered as uh, in, in, uh, in the sacrifice, it is not allowed to leave the temple area once it's consecrated. So Isaac is the archetype of Yeshua the Messiah. That's why verse 5 explains, Hashem explains to Isaac, now why is he being blessed? Why? Because, verse 5, because Abraham hearkened to my voice, he kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my law. So when, when, when it came to God explaining to Abraham, to Isaac, why God chose him to have a covenant with him, God didn't tell him, you know, because, because uh, Abraham had faith and it was accounted for him for righteousness. So, yes, of course, that's true, but faith without works is dead. Notice when it came down to God himself explaining the choice of Abraham to Isaac, why the promise is being passed on to him, what did God say? That's why I, uh, I'm about to bless you because, uh, because Abraham believed in me. He, it, uh, he didn't say that he, because Abraham believed in me and it was credited to me as righteousness. But instead, what God said is, because Abraham obeyed my voice, Abraham kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws or my Torah. So very interesting, very, very interesting. Uh, so the next ch chapter 26, Isaac is known in, in, uh, in, in his life to be the one who digs wells. So the, the digging of the well, the digging of the well alludes to many things. The first one, it alludes to convert. So, so uh, Isaac's servants dug the well. The well is a euphemism for converts. Isaac was seeking converts whose purpose, uh, the whole purpose of our calling is to win souls, to bring people into the truth. Pray for Hashem to bring people to, to the truth. Hashem said that is why he gave the Jewish people the Torah. To do what? To be the light to the nations. The purpose of the Torah, aside from uh, uh, living a holy separate life and blessing us, is for us to be the light to the others so that others can join in, so they can be a part of it. How can they be a part of it if we are not shining the, 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 to the nations uh, the glory of God? Amen. So Isaac digs anew the well of water which they have dug, and the Philistines have plugged up after Abraham's death. And he called them the same name as his father called them. So Isaac's servants dug the well in the valley and dug another well, Sinna, uh, went uh, there from Beersheba. So, so, so God, uh, so he is alluding to the convert because it, it, what happened is when uh, Isaac um, came there, he sought the converts, the people that were converted by ice by Abraham, that has, has, that has gone back to their pagan ways. And so here uh, it's alluding to Isaac uh, reconverting them and telling them that they can come back again to the, to the truth. And, um, and another allusion to the digging of well, the well also alludes to the first and second, uh, the temple and also the, the third temple. So uh, Isaac digging wells, the first well he covered by the Philistines and the second well was covered by the Philistines as well. The first well is called Asek. The second well was called Sitna. So, and of course the third well, which was successfully dug was not filled up. It's called Rekovitz. And the Ramban, who is a, a, an ancient commentator says, it's symbolism of the, the temple, the Beit HaMikdash, because the, the temple is a, is a source of pure divine Torah, the uh, source of pure divine word, the living word that gives water, that brings life. So the first two temples were destroyed. It's only the third temple that's, that will endure. And Ramban says, he sees that the wells, because of the name given is 
alluding to the, the, the destruction of the first temple. The first temple was destroyed, why? Because of bad business, meaning the children of Israel, we disobey God, they serve, they, they, they serve idols. The second temple was destroyed, it was called Sitna. Why? Because it was destroyed, not because they were not following the Torah. This time they were following the Torah, but it was destroyed because they had hatred. They had baseless, baseless hatred. And finally, uh, the last, the third temple, which will be uh, established by Yeshua, the Messiah, when the temple will come down, it will, it will be rekovitz, meaning it will be expansive. According to the Jewish writing, the temple will be so expansive that it will stretch from Jerusalem to, the, to, uh, to Damascus. Can you imagine that? From Jerusalem to Syria, that's how big the second temple will be. So it's alluding to that the influence, it could, it could well be a, a metaphor for the influence of God of Yeshua's temple will be will so be so expansive that it will light the whole earth, the whole universe. Amen. So what's interesting about when the, the when when Isaac felt that he was going to die, of course, after he conveyed a blessing to Isaac, he lived another fifty years. But uh, during this period, he felt that he was about to give a blessing. But it's interesting the dynamics. There's a bigger story here because when Isaac felt that he was about to die, and um, he, he, he wanted to give a blessing to his firstborn Esau, and Rebecca sees that Esau is not supposed to be the one to receive the firstborn blessing. It should be Jacob. So she engineers the whole deception in which Isaac was thinking he was blessing Esau, but was actually blessing Jacob. So, so there's something ma magical with, uh, on the blessing because when Isaac conveyed the blessing, it's interesting that if he conveyed a blessing to the wrong son, could he not just take the blessing out? But it seems like when he declared the blessing, it was so magical that it took effect. That's why, um, again, our words uh, bring wave. And it's this example where the weight of what Isaac blessed his son, it uh, it was a it was indeed a blessing. So, but it's interesting the family dynamics compared to Abraham and Sarah. That is, Abraham had a problem child too. It's called Ishmael. Israel was not Sarah's child. Isaac and Rebekah also had a problem child. His name is Esau. But look at how different uh, the way. Abraham and Sarah handled their problem child. So in the case of Abraham and Sarah, when, uh, when uh, there was a problem, Sarah saw the problem, she directly told Abraham. It says, he said, she said, this kid is creating problems. He's undermining the spiritual heritage we need to, that we need to preserve. We need to do something about it. We need to send him away. So at first, Abraham didn't want to do it, but he asked Hashem, and Hashem said to him, listen to what Sarah said, and she was right. There was the kind of directness in the relationship. There were, they were like a team, a co-equal. Uh, in the Jewish writing, it says, Abraham worked with, with, with the men and Sarah, the women, in the ministry. And when there was a problem, Sarah took the initiative and addressed the problem and dealt with it. No cover-ups, no misdirection, no hidden things, very direct, the type of relationship predicated on mutual respect. On the case of uh, Rebecca and Isaac, it's, it's a different story. Why does Rebecca not tell Isaac about Esau? Like telling Isaac that Esau is not who you think he is. Rebecca has to deal with trickery, deception. Can't really tell Isaac what is bothering her. Could it, could it be on a superficial level? It could be that due to the age difference. The other opinion says that maybe Isaac was rather in many, many ways, a very high 
connected spiritually, meaning he was so heavenly minded because of his experience with the the Akira, the binding, his, he, him offering himself as a sacrifice that Rebecca could not relate to her, that Rebecca could not tell her the day-to-day the, the, the -day problems that he's seeing. And it could all, another commentary said that maybe uh, Ribka was so overwhelmed by the Shekinah, the presence, the glory that Isaac uh, had that she was not comfortable speaking with her. But at any rate, um, what is the firstborn blessing really versus the, the what is the, the firstborn birthright versus the firstborn blessing? Like I said, the firstborn, the firstborn uh, right Esau gave away was more for the spiritual side of it. Rasal makes note that Esau did not become a, a denier of God until his father died. Because often what happens is uh, the children sometimes are closer to their grandparents. Why? Because uh, um, the parents, when, they're, when, when we're raising our children, there's a lot of tension, there's a lot of uh, disagreements, and sometimes uh, the children feel that they cannot relate, to, they cannot speak to their parents. And Abraham was there to, uh, to help raise the children. So he was able to relate better with the, with the twins. Because um, Esau and Re Re Rebecca were trying to, to uh, mold Esau into a, to a uh, he, he's like a square in a round peg. Meaning, you know, when you have twins, oftentimes we try to raise them the same way. We, 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 we give them the same clothing. We, we uh, put them in the same activities. But Esau was a man of action. He was... He was more comfortable outdoors, whereas East, uh, Jacob was comfortable with the classroom environment. So he learned better inside, whereas Esau uh, could not relate. That's why uh, the, the, the Jewish writing says that, that uh, part of the problem was they were trying to, to mold Esau in the way that they wanted to. And later on, it backfired because Esau... Um, after the death of Abraham, um, you know, became very materialistic and he didn't care about the spiritual things. So um, Isaac intended to bless, to give him the, uh, the, uh, the blessing of the birthright or the firstborn, the blessing of the firstborn. Um, because later on, it will be a model. Uh, we'll see here that the, the tribe of Issachar was the tribe dedicated to teaching. And uh, the tribe of Zebulon was a tribe dedicated to business. And the tribe of Zebulon was the one who financed the, the tribe of Issachar so they could continue studying, they continue teaching Torah. So in effect, that was the vision of Isaac. Isaac was visioning that Esau will be the one that will carry the, uh, the material blessing, the protector, and uh, Jacob will be the one that will be teaching the Torah to the nation. So it was a comp complementary thing, but um, um, Rivka saw that, the, that um, Esau was beyond correction, meaning Esau, if he got the blessing, will not support the work of God and thus he had to orchestrate the deception. So uh, going to uh, the next slide. So we, we see here that uh, Jacob uh, listened to his mother and said, um, and he put on a deception. Esau spurned his birthright. J Jacob pretended to be Esau, but, and, uh, but, uh, we know that the birthright uh, belongs to, uh, to uh, Jacob now because uh, Esau didn't want anything to do with it. We see here that uh, verse 16, that um, Isaac suspected something was wrong. 
Why? Because when Jacob pretended to be Esau, according to uh, the verse before uh, Genesis chapter 27, it says there that he sounded like Jacob and uh, the sense of hearing told Esau that you're not Jacob, you're Esau. I mean, you're not Esau, you're Jacob. So Isaac asked him to come closer. So he touched him. So the sense of, the sense of touch failed Esau because Jacob, oh, sorry, failed Isaac because Jacob was able to, to put on um, the hair of the, the sheep. And then, so of course, we know that his sense of sight failed him because he could not, he had, he had bad eyes. He could not distinguish the two. And then the sense of taste also failed Isaac because Jacob prepared or Re Rebecca prepared a, the, the, the venison, the food that uh, Isaac loved. And he tasted it and it, it tasted the way he wanted it to be tasted. And finally, the final arbiter, the final one that made him realize who the, who the blessing should really come from is when he started to smell him. So here we see that the, the Isaac represents the Mashiach. Remember, he was the, he was the one uh, who is sacrificed, who is the image of the father. So uh, we learned that in the last days, how will the, the Messiah judge us? The Messiah will judge us not by our appearance or whether we sound like we are a Torah person. The, the way God will judge us is by our, by he's going to smell us. Amen. And uh, what is he going to smell uh, smell us by? He's going to smell us whether we have spent time with him in the atonement altar and whether we have gone inside the altar of incense where we have spent time with God in prayer. And finally, he will smell us whether we are, we smell like burn, burn wicks that are burning to, to, to shine the light of God's word to the world. So we learn here that when he smelled Jacob, he knew that the blessing, uh, this child is the one that will will receive will will uh, will inherit the blessing. So it says here that in the last days, uh, in, in in judgment day, he's, Yeshua is going to smell us. Yes, you is going to smell us and decide based on our fragrance whether or not we are righteous or not. Why? Because our smell cannot trick us. We cannot trick our smell. If we smell bad, we smell bad. If we smell, even if you put perfume on it, it will still stink. Amen. So uh, the, the 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 true test of who we are is how the, the fragrance coming out of our lives, and that is what God will will judge us with. So when Esau comes back, what happens? When Esau comes back, it says there that. Uh, instead of blessing Esau, Jacob realized that he was uh, Isaac, Isaac realized that he was blessing Jacob, which confirmed uh, that he is the one that he is supposed to bless. Esau came after blessing of Jacob, and Isaac trembled. Who is who is who is you? Who are you? I, I blessed. He says there, I, I blessed him. I already blessed him. And Esau said, you know, uh, I am Esau, your son. So here you see here that Esau is like a wolf in sheep's clothing, a real faker. Isaac says to him, who are you? He's associated with a faker, associated with Esau. The firstborn, he said, when Esau heard, he cried and said, bless me too, my father. But he said, your brother came in cleverness and took your blessings. And he said to him, is it, is it, is it not Jacob his name? He has outwitted you these two times. 
Esau has not yet figured out that that blaming Jacob for outwitting him, but it but Esau that gave that gave up his birthright and did not have any issue giving it to Jacob then. Esau forgot that he sold his birthright. The birthright comes with a blessing that Jacob now has. Esau asked, have you only one blessing for me? Isaac said, behold, the Lord has made him, oh, I, I, the Lord has made him Lord over you and all his skins have I supported with grain and wine. And for for what I can, what else can I give you? So, so here we see here that Jacob also inherited the material blessings. Uh, so, so, um, but we see what happens, right? That uh, when when uh, when uh, Jacob realized that he blessed, he was almost going to bless the wrong son that he was quivering, he was shaking. He was shaking because he realized he could have given the blessing to the wrong child. Now, when, when, uh, when Jacob was, was sent off to find a wife, he said, don't bury any of the women here. And when, Isaac, when, when Esau heard that, what did he do? He went and married the son of Ishmael, the daughter of Ishmael. So here we see that when he when Jacob was being sent, now Isaac now knows he's blessing the, the correct child. So now he's he's giving him the priestly blessing. He said, he said to Jacob and bless him. He said, I charge him and said to him, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan, but go arise yourself, go to, to Panan Daram, the house of Dituel, my mother, your mother's father. And take a wife from the daughters of Laban, your mother's, your mother's brother. Look at verse 3. And God bless you and make you fruitful and multiply you that you may be a congregation of peoples. I give you the blessing of Abraham to thee and to thy seed after thee that you may inherit the land of thy sojourning which God gave unto Abraham. So you see here the, the, the blessing that Isaac was conveying at his deathbed was a material blessing. It has nothing to do with a spiritual blessing that God told Abraham and Abraham get to, gave to Isaac. So here, here is the blessing that, Ab that Jacob will be the, the, the one that will carry the Messiah. So, so here, Isaac knew for sure that the, the physical blessing was just was was just part of that but even if Jacob did not get that this is the more important blessing and and God gave it to 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 uh, and Isaac gave it to the right son it says that that God almighty bless you and make you fruitful and multiply your blessing that you may be a congregation of people I give you the blessing of Abraham to thee and to thy seed with thee that you may inherit the land of thy sojournings, which God gave unto Abraham. So here, uh, we can clearly see here, we can clearly see here that if you notice that the blessing that, that Abraham conveyed when uh, uh, Jacob pretended to be Esau has nothing to do with this blessing. This is the more important blessing. And that is the, the blessing that uh, uh, affirms the connection uh, of our patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and finally Jacob, Israel. Amen. So today uh, we will conclude with this message saying that when the Messiah returns, we he will smell us like, we, will we smell like priests that have spent time in the brazen altar representing our atonement? Will he smell Will we smell like we have spent time in the altar of incense, representing our prayer life? And finally, will we smell like burnt wick on the menorah, which is our witness to his light? Let us pray. Elvino Malkenu, our father, our king. We thank you that the, uh, the, 
blessing that was conveyed by Isaac to Jacob and uh, is, is available to us through the blood of Yeshua the Messiah. We thank you for the atoning death, life, and resurrection of the Messiah that we is available to us and that we are able to enter in. We're not staying at the door of the tabernacle of the temple. We are able to enter in into the holy place where we can uh, start, we can we can feed from the word of God, the, 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 the table of showbread representing the word of God, that, uh, that we may be able to be the burnt wick of the light of the menorah and be immersed in prayer, in the, the altar of incense. May we be a, a, may our life be a fragrant aroma before you as we near this, as we enter into this month of miracle, Father, may I pray for miracles for my brothers and sisters, whatever it is that is in their lives that are, that they need breakthrough from, Father, we just release the power of your miracle through the power of the blood of Yeshua on this month upon my brothers and sisters, that breakthrough will happen. Whatever it is that they're believing for, Father, let, I believe that breakthrough will, will come true as we put our faith and trust in the Messiah Yeshua. And everybody said, Amen. 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 So thank you for joining today. And may each one of you have a blessed week as we uh, prepare for the coming of the, Mesh the Messiah. Amen?